Where are you going, Cam? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be attempting to make a Durmstrung uniform from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now I'm so excited about this because this is a costume I have been wanting to make for years and I'm finally getting to do it. And what makes it even more exciting is that my husband will be wearing this costume along with me when we go on our honeymoon to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and Orlando! Yay! So before we even get started, I'm just going to pop a disclaimer in now. I'm not using the screen accurate fabric to make this from. The one in the films are made from a felted wool and believe it or not, I actually am quite fond of my husband and I didn't want him dying of heat stroke while we were over there. So I've opted to make it out of a polyester suiting fabric instead. But with that all being said, let's dive right into it. Alrighty, first things first, the fabric. So like I said, this is a polyester suiting fabric. Same with the pants fabric, but in brown. Then I have a lining fabric for the suit jacket. And then I have this faux fur for the cape. These are the notions I'll be using for the jacket and the pants. And this is a red ribbon for the pants as well. And finally, I'll be using McCall's M4745 as the base for everything. So I thought I'd give you a rundown of my mock-up that I've made here out of bed sheets first. So as you can see, I've got the cape on this side. It needs to be lengthened by seven and a half inches along the bottom there. So we've got the jacket underneath. I have added the front flap on this side. These numbers down the side here are how much I need to extend the side panel by. We've got the collar extension, which I've added there as well. The extension on the front panel here too. So the next step for me is to make the changes along this edge here, do another mock-up and then transfer it to my final pattern paper and then I can cut it out of the actual fabric. So that's where we're at. So the first thing I'm going to do with the Durmstrang costume is to cut out the cape. I've got the uh, mock-up I did here. The reason I'm doing the cape first is because I'm not actually sure how much fabric it's going to take up out of the main fabric which is on the floor just there and so I figured if I cut that out first then I don't have to worry about what's left over for the jacket I can make mistakes and it's not going to matter because the cape is already cut out so let's do that first. I'm using the mock-up I did for the cape as a base to cut out the actual cape from the fabric but first I'm making sure to extend it by that seven and a half inches that I mentioned earlier so it'll be the correct length. I then repeat this process for the fake fur. I then use what's left of the fabric to cut out all the pattern pieces for the jacket. And then I cut out all the lining pieces. And finally, cutting out some interfacing for the jacket front and the collar pieces. Then before I start anything else, I use an iron to apply the interfacing and I make sure to copy any notches or markings that were on the pattern pieces.
day two of working on my Durmstrang costume. So far I'm pretty happy with how it's coming together. It looks terrible on my mannequin but that's because it doesn't have the same proportions as Cameron. I tried it on him last night and it is looking so good and I'm so happy with it. Today what I'm going to do is add the taily bits along the bottom here and I'm going to do the sleeves. The sleeves have a minor alteration on them that I have to change from the pattern so I'll walk you through that as I'm doing it. And I decided I'm going to add shoulder pads into the shoulders because I think it looks much nicer. So let's get started. Alrighty, so I've now got the bottom skirt flappy bits pinned onto the actual jacket. It's looking great. Now I just need to repeat all the steps I used to make the bottom skirt flappy bits in the lining and then I can attach it to the rest of the jacket and then get started on the sleeves. So I've just gone to this part here in the instructions where I'm going to be connecting the lining to the skirt flappy bits. And I've decided that I'm just going to disregard those instructions entirely and make it up as I go along. The reason being is I didn't realize that the pieces I cut had a 6.5 centimeter hem on them. And as it is currently, that's too much fabric for me to take up and hem. So yeah, I'm just going to wing it and see how it goes. So my plan for it is I'm going to baste along the bottom edge of the jacket, so sew the lining to the outer fabric, and then I'm going to get the skirt flappy bits and I'm going to attach them like so, and encase the bottom edge of the jacket, flip it right side like that, and then all I'll have to do is hem the bottom edge which I was going to be doing by hand anyway so that's the plan. Ta-da! So it's all sewn on now and I just have to wait for Cameron to come home so I can hem the bottom edge to sit correctly on him. And now all that's left to do is add the sleeves. I just finished making the sleeves. They're not attached just yet because now I've got to do the alteration. Currently they have been made exactly to the pattern specifications but if you notice on the ones that they're wearing in the film they actually have a cuff that sits about there and then it's got a bit of brown piping along the top edge which is the same fabric that's used in the pants so I'm now going to go to my mind palace and figure out exactly how I'm going to add that to the bottom edge of these sleeves. The first step is making some bias out of the pants fabric. Now that I have my fabric noodles, I'm going to put some piping cord in the center and using the zipper foot on my machine, I'm going to sew as closely as possible and voila, piping. So I think I have figured out how I'm going to do the sleeve. I think I'm going to cut about five inches up and then I'm going to remove this bottom half and then going to sew the piping in along on that five inch mark and I think what I'm going to do is using the bottom bit that I cut off here I'm going to make a pattern piece from it that only has a seam on one side so it'll do away with that one there just to give the illusion that it's actually a cuff and then I'll sew it along the bottom edge there I'll understitch it on the inside so it rolls over nicely and hopefully that should result in this cuff for the bottom of the sleeve and then I can attach the sleeves onto the rest of the costume. Here is one sleeve piped and tacked back onto the dress form. I'm pretty happy with how it looks so I'm going to finish it, I'm going to do the other one and then I'm going to get them stuck onto the actual jacket. So I'm on a mission today to find belts for this costume. I 
don't have the skills to make them myself nor do I have access to the leather required to make it myself so what I'm going to do instead is hit up all the op shops in my area and just pray that some of them have belts that would be appropriate for this costume and yeah so come along with me today and that's what we're going to get done. First up is the SPCA op shop and they only had cheap nasty plastic belts so they were no good. Next up was the hospice shop. Usually they have a huge selection but they didn't today although they did have this one belt here that I was considering picking up for a Wednesday raven dress that I'm making as well. Next was the Red Cross shop but they were the first shop to have no belts. Next was the Salvation Army and I absolutely hit the jackpot in here. I found this genuine leather belt as soon as I came, no not that one, this one here and it was the perfect width, the perfect colour, I loved everything about it and it was only two dollars, what a bargain. Then it was time for the next SPCA op shop but they also had no belts. And finally I was really desperate because I hit up Save Mart and I absolutely hate Save Mart, it is so damn expensive, but I did find the last belt that I needed there. Alright, so I'm back from the secondhand shops and these are the results. Really happy with this bottom belt here. Perfect width, colour, texture and everything. Only issue with it is that this is actually the reverse side of it, so I just have to do the buckle up round the wrong way and then it, it's fine, you don't see it, it's in the back, who cares. This top one here, love the width of it, love the texture, love the colour, however it is like probably a good 8 inches too short. <laughs> there is a whole section that's going to be hidden under the capes here that you're not going to see. So I'm going to cut it, I'm going to put an elastic extension in between the two halves and then it'll fit properly. And it only costs $10. Wow, wonderful. Hello, so it is a new day and today I am hoping to finally get the jacket at least completed. You can see I've got a sleeve here. I just need to attach those and then do the hemming of the skirt flappy bits and it's literally done. Also today I'm hoping to finally dye the cape fabric. I haven't been able to do it for the past week or so because we're actually in a state of emergency currently. We have had torrential rain just everywhere and everywhere's been flooding and it's been horrible and so like you can't dye fabric in that weather either because it's never going to dry. However we have a break in it today. It's 27 degrees. I spent the morning dyeing it. It is currently soaking in the bathroom so fingers crossed it actually turns out because I've never tried to dye fabric not on a stove top so a little bit nervous about that. Let's get the sleeves on this. Let's hem the bottom and then maybe I can look at getting the cape done today as well. All around me are familiar faces. So it's entirely too big for me, but I just wanted to show you it with the sleeves on now. It's looking really cool. So all I got to do is wait for Cameron to come home and then I can mark out where I'm going to put the snaps in it so that it can actually close as well, but it's neat. So the dye didn't take to the fur fabric. I did some Google researching of why it might have happened and general consensus is I didn't use enough dye whatsoever. I only had a half a brown bottle left and I was like, oh, that'd be fine. Turns out it wasn't. This dirty looking grey, it's not it. It's not what we wanted. That means I won't be sewing the cape together this afternoon, so I thought what I could do instead is make a start on the little bear claw button things that he has. But to do that, I have got some Sculpey, one in black, one in silver, some tin foil, and a whole bunch of sculpting tools. So that's what we're going to be doing now instead. First, I make a very rough shape out of tin foil and use this as the center, so then I cover it in clay and then start going in and putting in the detail. When you make one of the claws and it's awesome and perfect and then you have to make another one match it exactly. I mean, not too bad. And repeating the process again for the silver claw.
we've had a casualty. This guy here broke off in the oven. That's okay. I'll get some glue and I'll fix it. It's gonna be fine. I may have left them in there a little bit too long as well, as it looks like the claws started to crack a bit. But I'm just going to sand them down a little bit and hopefully that'll make them look all good. After sanding the claws down a bit, I put acrylic black paint on the black claws and a silver automotive paint on the silver one and then dry brushed each other with each other's paints and finished with a gloss varnish. Before finally attaching them to the jacket. I made the jacket portion of the Durmstrang uniform from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I am so so happy with how this is coming together, it's exactly what I wanted. I'm really surprised with how well the clay claws turned out. I was expecting them to look like, well, turds honestly, but I think they look great. And I'm really happy with how it fits Cameron. There are some things that I will be changing on it though. I will be making sure that this bare claw here actually sits flush like that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, I've got a couple of ideas, but next time you see it that bare claw should be sitting flush on the shoulder. I'm also going to be adding a snap into the neck here because currently it doesn't have one and it is flippy flippy. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, really happy with how it has come along. So next week's video, I will be making the cape this time, I promise I have ordered more dye and hopefully it should be here today sometime so I'll get stuck right into that. I'll be altering the belts that I brought and finding out a way to stick this little guy onto the actual belt because at the moment it's just sellotaped on. Yay! And I'll be doing the pants, which are completely straightforward. I don't have to alter anything for that, so that is awesome! So, if you liked what you saw here this week, please give it a like down below. It means a lot to me, and if you really like it, you should probably subscribe too, because I do a lot of sewing, crafting, and having a fun here on this channel. And I usually try and upload a new video every Friday or so. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye!